Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to we're gonna look at what all those nice things are, I would say, on the map, on the world map to be specific, from Flight Simulator 2020. One quick warning or quick notion about it is that I've installed the latest uh, beta version of a sim update number 8, which has some changes, which we're also gonna discuss in this video. So when looking at this, I would say default map, right? We can see multiple things. In this case, we can see the airport and we can see the runways, which are indicators here. And then also the parking spots, depending on the airport, right? It has either one or multiple parking spots. Some are also being referred to as ramps, right? If we go to the skip hole, and then you will see that there are some, oh, the skip hole is a little bit further. Uh, you will see a lot more, but uh, they're being referred to as gate parkings, but that's only applicable if an airport has, I would say, gates, right? So where you've got the uh, jetways to connect to. So this is the default view of Flight Simulator, right? So you can easily recognize the airports. You can see if uh, the runways, which are indicated, and you can see the parking spots also. In addition to that, on the world map, you can see the point of interest, right? So you can see Mass Flag Delight, uh, Erasmus Bridge, and the uh, windmills at Kinderdijk, and some other parts uh, which might be interesting, including some small airports. Now, to see some more, you need to go to Open Filters, and there are multiple options here which are by default switched off. For example, the Navates. So let's start with the middle one in this case. You see that once that option is enabled, there are some new icons on the screen. And those are these ones, right? So if we open the legend, we are able to see, okay, what is this uh, type of beacon? In this case, we can say, hey, it's a VOR DME, which means it provides us both the direction and also the distance uh, to the, uh, what's a uh, from the airport, from the aircraft, I should say, right? So if we're flying, I would say here, then we uh, can use our instruments to figure out, hey, this is the beacon we need to fly to, and this is the distance. However, in some countries, they are deprecating those beacons, right? They're deprecating the VOR part of the beacons, which results in that some of the beacons only have the DME uh, functionality. For example, here you see one. And if I click it, you can see, okay, it clearly says DME and then the frequency. So you can still use it, but only to figure out, hey, what's the distance to this beacon? So it doesn't provide any direction. And you've got multiple of those, I would say, across uh, multiple parts of the world. Now we want to search for another beacon type. And those are, I'd say, in Germany, there are several ones. Uh, let me figure out. Sometimes you need to zoom in a little bit further, right? And of course, when searching for some NDBs, you can't find them. Let me see. I had one lately, I'm pretty sure. It was not in this. It was, I think it was pretty. It was somewhere in Germany. Uh, I think it was here around Frankfurt. Yeah, that was it. So, and here we see one. So, right <laughs> after searching for one, we find one. And in this case, you can see this is an NDB, right? So, so the legend shows it. You can see this is an NDB, which means it's an NDB. And in some cases, you also have NDBs with DME capacity. And in, in that case, the DME capacity is the same one as the VOR uh, will provide you. Uh, unfortunately, there are no, I would say, at least I didn't find any NDB DMEs, but probably they, there are some of them, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, then we've got uh, this one. And this is a little bit special one, and it's also the frustrating uh, piece, right? You need to uh, hide the legend to move the map. And those are the VOR ones. And those only provide you directional uh, information and not 
it's a distance so it doesn't provide you or the information to say okay hey this is the distance to this specific uh beacon i can see there's a mix right so both uh for dme but also only dmes uh, and dbs and that's why you need to understand how you need to use them which you can see on several of my videos which i posted on my channel now let's go back to the filters and switch on the fix and earn off uh, position report items you can see that tons of white dots are being added to the map and if we cl go closer to the map you will see that there are multiple types being added to the map besides the beacons we already had you can now see that there is an air enough waypoint right so that's for uh that's one of the approaches you can do it's an air enough approach and then you can use these beacons in addition to that we've got the fixes so the fixes can also be found easily by selecting them and these can also be used for navigation purposes for example here we have another one air nav and you can see multiple pieces there and why is that important well for example if we want to fly to uh in this case Rotterdam airport right let's assume that we're uh, let's put ourselves uh here as departure would still hope that you can still modify that piece then we can set it to uh, 4 to 4 right in that case they will define a route which is 4 to 4 but you can also say okay I want to fly low altitude or high altitude if you set it to low altitude you can see changes here right so this is our departure and then you can see hey it now lets us fly via this RNF waypoint to the next one which is here then to here and then to here right so it looks a little bit weird here but that's because it's i would say uh it didn't select an arrival or approach because that's the next item which you can do right so you can select the approach and that could be either direct or you can select one of the I would say approaches which is or arrivals which has been uh, set here so let's assume that you can set this or we leave this one to direct then we say okay hey we want to land on runway well 24 and then we've cancelled it to, for example rnav 24 in that case it will use the approach route for rnav 24 if you want to fly via an approach route or an arrival route so, so that means uh the standard terminal approach route and the arrival route or say the arrival route it defines the official let's say procedure how you need to fly to the airport uh while the um approach is the last piece of that approach route so in this case you can see okay we're going from here then we're first flying back to uh uh what is it charlie Oscar Alpha and then we're flying back using the route to the airport which we want now the last item and that's probably the most complicated one and those are the air spaces so you can see a lot of colors here but what do they mean so first of all when I saw this I thought okay hey, it must be somewhere here right it must be somewhere in the legend but unfortunately it's not explained anywhere so that's why I did some digging and to use, I would say, to dig uh, into this piece, I used my friendly to Navigraph because it also contains the uh, sections which you can see on the map. So let me start explaining, right? So I'm gonna first uh, so go back and then reset everything. Uh, so reset the uh, flight route because we're not interested. So let's start with this piece. In this case, what you will see is around several of the airports, you will see a nice, uh, let's say, orange circle. Uh, but unfortunately, the, that color doesn't fit, let's say, specify, hey, this is only specifically for airports, right? I read some documentation about the several categories which you have in the airports, which you can fly. But unfortunately, in Flight Simulator, it's not used that way because this part means that this airspace is for in this case uh echo hotel uh victor bravo 
that's the airport right Falkenberg Navy and then we see also see a large square around here and that large square means that you can also use it for different purposes and you can see it also here so what does it mean this means that it also is allowed to use a glider here and that's what I'm going to show you here right you can see a glider area uh, Hoek van Holland and a glider area Valkenburg so what does it mean well that's I would say <laughs> nasty to figure out using flight simulator so you can also see red squares here those red squares are in most cases prohibited uh, airspaces so you can't fly above this part of the city and that's mostly due to the fact that there's an important building or there's something else going on where you're not allowed to well luckily Navigraph also tells you what it is right so we can click on it and it says here okay hey, it's a royal palace and government building those are in the section so you can't fly here and the other one that's the uh, the Hague uh, in this monument right it's also I would say a restricted area where you can't fly to uh, so you can't fly over this part of the city it's not allowed so looking further we see a lot of yellow lines and um, we start with this one which is in a little bit I would say weird form right it's almost uh, I would say a decoration for your Christmas tree uh, this part means that this I would say uh, part of the map is being governed by a specific airport in this case you can see that this is managed by uh, Rotterdam Airport uh, so we've got the small airports which are marked by the orange ranges and we've got the larger airports which are marked by the yellow uh, lines and in that case you can see that there sometimes is an overlap right you can also see the uh, we would zoom a little bit further you can see that there are multiple airspaces sometimes overlapping each other so keep that in mind and the reason why they do that is when switching back to Navigraph we can see that this part so the, the I would say the Christmas decoration let's call it that way that one is managed by Rotterdam Center which means the airport itself then we also have the other yellow lines and depending on if you're on this part of this part it's either managed by Rotterdam uh, TMA or it's managed by uh, Amsterdam Airport Schiphol TMA so depending on the, the part where you are it's managed either by uh, this airport or the, the traffic tower on this airport or by the traffic tower on this airport right there are multiple reasons for that and you can see that it's divided here right so here you can see that it's Amsterdam South and here it says uh, New Milgen and uh, that's the other part which is um, managed by a different uh, let's say part of the uh, traffic control then we've got some other interesting things like this one PGE area which simply means it's allowed to uh, jump with parachutes but it's also allowed to fly with drones uh, that's something I also need to figure out myself because it was not clearly documented, documented anywhere uh, so that's cool right so you can uh, can do that so here it all says it only says warning level so you need to be uh, careful about that and that you're probably find some gliders here or sorry not gliders parachutes or maybe you will find some um, drones here right and if we go back to flight simulator you can see that those are also orange boxes so whereas in I would say Navigraph they have got multiple different colors in flight simulator they decided to not use uh, multiple colors right so <clears throat> let's look at another example right so for example in um, the UK right you can also see large red parts being marked here which are simply prohibited areas so going back to Navigraph again you can see a lot of stuff here a lot more compared to what we saw on the flight simulator map yeah then we're gonna zoom in so this London City Airport and then we've got the other parts here uh, let me see which one <coughs> this was um, sometimes it's also really hard to figure out what it is this is the specified area area and it's restricted does it provide us more information about why this is restricted probably there's a good reason for this to restrict it mostly government buildings or something important here so that's also here right in uh, 
say on the coastline there's also oh it's also something it's a danger zone it's not clearly why it's a danger zone but it's a danger zone so you probably don't want to fly here right so that's cool um, but be aware of that so are there any other options or any other things based besides these items well not a lot right you can see a lot of overlaps sometimes being managed by a specific airport you can for example see here's a large part although i would expect that gatwick and heathrow are say different parts right um if we would go to the us which we can also do right that's that's the nice thing about flight simulator you can move to the other side of the world really quick for example if you would look at uh washington you can also see multiple red squares well i probably don't have to, have to tell you why these red squares are here and that's probably for a very good reason probably because they're also government buildings um and in some case you can see that the areas are pretty large right so for example uh, this one uh, which is uh Let's say this whole yellow line is really big which includes both the uh ronald reagan airport but also uh joint uh, base andrews right that's where air force one is located and mostly most times takes off um do we have any other things uh well not really besides this one and this is another nav 8 right which we didn't discuss because it's not there in europe it's <clears throat> not specific type I'm also not sure why it's being used for so if you know it then leave a comment in the comment box and let us know so we can share it with the rest of my uh, subscribers and viewers of my channel uh, I think that's it right we covered most points we discussed several items we also discussed okay hey what are those airspaces mean and are you allowed to fly over it yes or no uh, the funny thing between brackets is that if you would fly over it using flight simulator you're probably not being followed by a jet fighter or something well normally if you would fly across these areas then uh let's say they will not like it and uh, they will not allow you to fly there uh, unfortunately using the map here we can't figure out much it would have been nice if it would be uh, the same as in uh, Navigraph, right? That you can figure out, okay, hey, why is this, for example, a restricted area? But unfortunately, that's not built into Flight Simulator yet. Uh, maybe that will be done in the future. I think making a difference between the four and the four DME beacons and the DME beacons is already good. And while talking about that, they also added the Takan beacons and the Takan are for military flights. Uh, but I'm not sure if you can find the Takan beacon. So let me quickly search in uh, oh, Takan. In some cases, it's easier to use this one, but it looks like it can't be found easily. In most cases, the Takan beacons are pretty close to the, uh, let's say, pretty close to Navy bases. Uh, so what we can do, of course, we can go to Andrews because that's one here it is i'm not sure if there's any but we can have a close look uh, there's a localizer no of the fixes oh here this is the one right so this is the vortac that's another type so you've got the vortex and the tacons and the vortex are used for military flights so in this case it means that the vor functionality is combined with a uh, tacon functionality and this is one of them right so that's uh close uh, it's, what you will see is that they are pretty close to uh, say navy bases or uh, air force bases there you will see those beacons uh being used uh in the rest of the world I'm not sure how many how much they are used um this is also an air force base if i'm correct also not here no so that covers all the points right so now you know a little bit more about all those items on the world map which are a lot uh unfortunately sometimes there's some information missing like hey what are those uh maps or all those yellow lines and red lines mean now you know it orange line means i would say small airport or they're being used by gliders or anything else then you've got the red zones which are prohibited so you can't fly over it and you've got the yellow zones which are close to the airport 
here at this video i hope you liked it if you liked it then consider to use the like button if you got questions or comments then feel free to post them in the comment box below and if you want to stay up to date about my videos then make sure that you're subscribing to my channel thanks for watching and see you next time